When I experienced true conversion in my heart, I knew that trials would, would come, that they would be present in my life. But I think I had this false expectation that they would come, I would pray, and they would leave. And it wasn't until recently that I really understood this to be untrue. Eventually, wave after wave of trials came and they wouldn't leave. And it left me feeling really confused. Um, when I started full-time ministry and attended Souls West, I started experiencing uh, these pretty bad symptoms and I wouldn't be diagnosed until about seven years later through surgery, and that was for endometriosis and interstitial cystitis. I had a random routine eye exam and I was diagnosed with glaucoma. Through the midst of all this as well, I developed dysphagia and suddenly had trouble swallowing. And after numerous appointments and studies where I had to go under anesthesia or just do really unpleasant studies, doctors still don't know what's wrong. On top of those physical issues, I was also battling with just the mental aspect of processing my dad's abuse. Um, I think being the child of a narcissist really harms a person, and especially when it's a father figure and you look to your father figure um, in the same way that you would God, right? You know, you understand God to be your father. And when your father is the complete opposite, I mean, it really affects you. And I had to undo and unlearn a lot through that process to learn who God truly is and learn what God's love really means, that it's unconditional. But I was processing all these things at the same time, and I just was kind of taken aback and in shock because I thought, well, Lord, why are these things happening? What, I mean, I'm doing everything right. I'm eating healthy. I'm following like the health message. I'm uh, sleeping well and doing all these things that are supposed to lead to a healthy life. Why, why am I suffering so much? You know, I, I really isolated myself a lot, but the one weekend where I took it upon myself to be social, I come back and, and we had to put down my, my pet that I've had for half of my life. And so I thought, well, Lord, I can't even be happy during these times. I went and tried to cheer myself up um, amidst all these issues and, and this happens. And I tried to talk to God and be genuine with Him, but it was really hard. I think I wasn't being genuine. I was being pretty hypocritical tried to just name things that I was grateful for. But in the back of my mind, I just had this nagging voice saying, why, like, why is this happening? Why should I be grateful for these things when I'm going through so much? And I was really shocked that I had this voice in the back of my mind telling me these things because it made me feel guilty. And so it was a cycle where I would try to be grateful for things, I would then be reminded of all this suffering and how I'm not at peace and I'm in pain, whether physical or mental, and then would feel guilty about feeling that pain. And so there were many nights where I would try to call out to God and try to be genuine and I nothing would come out. It would just result in me saying, why, um, Lord, why? Or God, What's, what's going on, I don't understand, or just simply crying, <laughs> just crying the whole night. I would wake up and I was sad that I was awake because I would have hoped to have, you know, just passed in my sleep because when I woke up in the morning, I had that immediate pain, immediate um, rush of anxiety, knowing that I had these health issues, that some were unresolved. One night when I couldn't sleep, I came across a video of Job that really changed my perspective on what I was going through. And it was the part where Job had demanded God to explain why he was going through what he was going through. And God doesn't necessarily answer his question, but he asks Job, were you there when I created the heavens and the earth? Were you there when I ordained everything? It really changed my perspective because I thought, well, here I am demanding that God explain why I'm going through what I'm going through, but I, I'm not God. <laughs> I don't know the end from the beginning. I don't know why things are happening, but what I can do is trust that things will come to pass or that He will bring me peace. 
A few days later, I remembered that my friend gifted me a book named Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy, which spoke all about lament. And I finally decided to read it and it just really changed my world. <laughs> it explained that, you know, it's okay for a Christian to complain, not just stop at the complaint, but rather tell God what's on their mind, how they're feeling, be raw and be real because he can handle your feelings. And also, you know, claim promises that he has made that he will sustain you, he will bring you peace, that he promises abundant life. And so I started doing that. I would be raw and real with God. And through the tears, I would say, you know, Lord, I feel like I'm physically suffering, but you promise to bring healing in your wings and just things like that. And it really helped me to process what I was going through and really helped me to finally feel peace that I hadn't felt for months, if not for the past couple of years. Unlike Job, God hasn't restored my health to me. He hasn't restored the things that I've lost, the relationship with my dad and all those things. But he has given me peace, which I think is the greatest gift he could give me during this time. I'm able to wake up and not be sad that I woke up that morning, but rather feel grateful. I've been able to also just be grateful about the other things that are going on around me. During this time, it was really hard to, to find things to be grateful for, but as I've taken a look at the past few months, I've seen that God has answered prayers that I haven't even really prayed. You know, He's given me a job that's really understanding about my health issues and taking time off sometimes multiple times a week to address you know, the, the health conditions that I'm going through. Um, a family that is just always there for me, friends who are willing to listen and who constantly pray for me. And I think that through all this, I can say that I'm okay with what I'm going through because I know it'll lead me closer to Him. It may lead others closer to Him and whether or not restoration comes to me here on earth or until heaven, God doesn't lie. And He's promised me again, abundant life. He's promised me that He overcame the world. I can trust Him with these things that I have and just know that He's there, even if I don't feel Him.